Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we've got Ah Warner. She's the founder and CEO of Cannabis Basics. Got some new products I want to talk to you about. Ah, oh, thanks for being on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and exciting to uh, introduce the world to our, our new products. And you've got some in the background there, which I like. I've got some here as well. And so can't really see that as well as what you got. But how did you come up with this product line? Tell us a little bit about it before we jump into yourself and Cannabis Basics and the fact that you've been around for 25 years. How did you start this product line? Well, I think, you know, the old adage, uh, necessity is the mother of invention really applies here. Um, You know, everybody's uh, wearing masks for the first time in this pandemic. And um, what's happening is because these masks are, um, many of them are made with synthetic fabrics and dyes, and even just an all natural mask can really create havoc on your skin. Um, It's creating a you know, just a really a bad environment for skin uh, health. And so uh, there's a new term called mask knee, which is, you know, it's creating pimples and, you know, redness and inflammation around the mouth and nose, around where the, ru- the mask rubs. And so, uh, you know, I just thought there's got to be something that I can do to help this situation. You know, these, these people that are consistently wearing a mask, and I consider everyone who's consistently wearing a mask a hero, not just our frontline workers, but everybody that consistently wears a mask to protect others in my mind is a hero. So uh, I wanted to get something out there to ease some of the irritation. There's enough to deal with right now without dealing with your face being broken out because you're doing the right thing. And so what I've come up with is a three-step process, cleanser, toner, moisturizer. And so basically, the cleanser will detoxify and bathe your skin, get rid of the, you know, get rid of the, the uglies that are laying there. And the toner, um, I'm actually using uh, the toner with the new, uh, new process. So this is the first time I've been working with cannabis hydrosol. And so the toner is cannabis hydrosol, lavender hydrosol, or neroli hydrosol, aloe, witch hazel, just beautiful. And what this does is it balances, tightens, and tones your skin before you then put on the actual moisturizer. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'll go back to that before you actually put on the moisturizer, which is actually going to feed, nourish, protect, and, um, you know, cannabis does have antibi- antibacterial uh, properties and inf- anti-inflammatory and cell regenerative properties, but there's also elements in here with like tea tree that will deal with bacteria buildup. And so there, uh, the moisturizer is the last step. And that would be before you put on the mask, after you take a shower, you know, before you put on your makeup even would be great. And then going back to the toner real quick, I just want to say the great thing about the toner is that you can use this toner to refresh your mask. So it's not going to clean your mask. It's not going to, you know, it's not like washing your mask. You need to regularly regularly wash your mask. But this is just to spray inside the mask so that you have a much more pleasant experience while you're wearing it. Um, you know, our breath in and out the mask really can create a, an unsavory situation. So uh, multi-purpose, multi-use, and natural. Um, You know, the thing about my line is, you know, there's hemp seed oil, hemp and cannabis hydrosol, hemp and cannabis extractions and infusions all work in this product line. And then we double, we blend those with other natural botanicals. And then we come up with something fantastic. Even the paper for the, um, the cleanser is, is hemp paper. So I've, yeah, you're not messing around. It's post-consumer waste and hemp paper that I have had for over 20 years. So I keep finding purposes for these reams of paper that I bought, you know, 20 some years ago from the American Mm -hmm. Hemp Mercantile, Mm -hmm. you know, so I keep finding different uses. Yeah. So I was spraying my mask because I don't get to wash it every single time. I've got a couple of them, but I go to the gym every day or every morning 
And so being able to spray that and not having to smell my stinky mask from the, the day before or whatever is nice because it is refreshing. Right. And then when I was in the podcast studio, they were doing something. It wasn't paint, but it was like this chemically smell and it was giving me a headache. So I just sprayed some of this in my mask and I'm like trying to wear this, this mask while I'm doing a podcast, which wasn't the best, but it, um, it, it helped. So I wasn't really smelling that the headache kind of was going away as I wasn't constantly breathing this toxic uh -huh. air. So, um, yeah, I was able to you know, kind of use it. I, just to jump off from that point. Um, you know, we, we're all, we all talk about cannabinoids and you know there's 120 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant we tend to only talk about two of them but outside of that one of the reasons why i'm so excited about the toner the one that you're spraying in your mask is that this is a water distillation process and so basically you're not harvesting cannabinoids in that because because those are lipophilic, they, they bond to fat or they're washed away by ethanol. It's, it's a water process. And so you're doing water distillation to get the extreme terpenes in a concentration that would make an essential oil. But what you have left over are these terpenes in water that are just beautiful. I mean, I love extracting cannabis in all the different forms that I do, but this new hydrosol process that I'm using, like my lab has never seen smelt so magical and it is those terpenes that will block those smells that will block the ugly smells but also terpene therapy is very powerful so the lavender is very relaxing so it, it, if you're in an environment where you're being stressed out the the terpenes in these blends will help you know to calm and soothe as well so there's been a lot of actors actresses athletes politicians all jumping on board and so a lot of people have heard about CBD as sort of the gateway into the hemp and cannabis industry. Um, but even men can use hemp, uh, cannabis health and beauty aids, right? So like terpenes, are they good for beards? Skin is skin. Um, so it would be uh, terpenes on hair follicles. So, you, so the hair itself is, is dead. So it would be more... Um, I think that terpenes and cannabinoids are more helpful for your scalp, hmm. not necessarily your beard. Like it's part of, you know, like beard waxes and stuff. I'm not so sure that the terpenes are helpful on the hair itself. Um, so same thing with hair care. Like, I don't really think that there's a reason to put cannabinoids in uh, shampoo, but there's every reason to put it in a conditioner because that's what stays on your scalp. That's what, and so you're feeding the skin cells of your scalp and that helps for healthier hair growth. Well, as autumn kind of moves into winter, it's getting colder. My lips are getting drier. And although we're not going to Vegas for MJ BizCon, every time I go to Vegas, I have to remember to bring chapstick because my skin is just really dry, especially, you know, yeah. my lips that are, are used to being moist. And now that I'm wearing a mask all the time, it's not my whole face. So you've got this hero moisturizer, the orange and tea tree. So I've been kind of rubbing this on my hands as my hands are getting dry. My face is getting dry. There's wildfires everywhere things are just really dry right now and i can't complain because in the northwest it's it's not wet <laughs> and it's been beautiful and yet there's some some downsides to that being kind of dry cracking skin so this hero moisturizer this is something that you can use on on hands and face if it's uh dry and especially with uh what did you call it uh mask me Mask me. Yeah. Mask it's me. Recovery. Mask me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Acne. Yeah, got acne. it. <laughs> um, so I would suggest that this particular product, yes, you can use it on your hands, but I think it's a higher quality. This is facial quality. And, uh, you know, I mean, really just a little small pea size deals with the issues. We at Cannabis Basics, we also have a, um, a lotion that it comes in a much bigger size and that is a little bit more appropriate for all over body skin care. So this would be, this is designed specifically for your face um, and for this particular issue. You don't really need to have tea tree for hand lotion. Um, and so, you know, we do have other products on the website that are better suited for, you know, body skin care. Um, yeah, the, the cleanser is great because that is a, a facial quality soap and it is um, so good for people with, for baby skin, for people with um, older skin. And then the hemp seed oil left over that is, you know, hemp seed oil is the foundation of everything I do for 25 years. And so um, it's, 
it's it's rich in omega six and three. Um, it's just the best oil for skincare. So we have there's hemp seed oil in everything that I do except for the toner. The, you don't need a tone. You don't need a oil in a toner. So that's the hydrosols there. But uh, hemp seed oil first off for if you're having problematic skincare, that's where you need to look is is to the rest of our line for um, you know lotions and skin oils. You know, sometimes using a, a straight up oil, skin oil, instead of a lotion is even better, depending on the, the purpose. And not the, not a, none of these products are too fragrant. Like when I'm walking by somebody and I have to, you know, cover my mouth or whatever, because that perfume is so funky. None of these are, you know, feminine or masculine. Um, you know, it's orange and, and rose smelling and it's not too, too powerful. So really it kind of crosses all genders. That was definitely by design. I did not want to alienate anybody when I designed these. And um, so mainly the, the blends are usually a lavender and a citrus or mint. That's just in general, because what happens is the lavender relaxes and soothes this. And this is whether you're male or female, the lavender is very relaxing and soothing. And then the citrus or mint kind of brings you back up and revives you. So it's a really good balancing just on a terpene level. And uh, remember a lot of times when you're put off by a scent of something, it's because they're using man-made fragrance oils. And you know, your body knows when it comes up against something that's not real. And all of our products are essential oils. They come, they're come from the plants. They, we don't use any fragrance oils at all whatsoever. Hmm. So that's why they're so pleasant. And um, it feels good when you're wearing them, using them. I mean, our, our massage oil, not to get too far away from this guy, but our massage oils, lavender and tangerine and a full body massage with the lavender and tangerine and cannabis. Because remember, you're getting some of the terpenes from the cannabis. So these do, especially the Chava line has the full on, you know, has a little bit of that marijuana fragrance as well with all those mixed terpenes coming from the cannabis plant. And it's so beautiful with lavender and citrus. Well, so I want to talk to you about Chaba and your, your other line, because you didn't just kind of come out of the gate with this. You've been in the business for quite a while. But first, for people that are interested in this, this hero line that you specifically came up with, you know, from uh, mastny and, and issues, uh, dryness, whatever, uh, where can they get this at? Are, are these in stores? It is online. Well, right now, uh, uh, we just were launched on Amazon.com uh, for the Hemp Basics. So Hemp Basics has no marijuana in it. Cannabis Basics has marijuana in it and only available in Washington State. So Hemp Basics is on, on Amazon, can be sold anywhere in the country. If you're lucky enough to be here in Washington State, the great green state of Washington, um, you can purchase the Cannabis Basics line, the Chaba line that has marijuana in it low levels, non-intoxicating. Um, but the easiest way is to either call um, 206-851-HEMP-4367 or go directly to our website and our cannabisbasics.com. And on the website, you'll see two tabs, one that says buy hemp basics, buy cannabis basics. So if you're in Washington state, you can go to the buy cannabis basics and follow the steps there. If you're in anywhere else in the country, you go, you go to the hemp basics tab and get it and so the entire line is available not just the mast hero uh face rescue system but everything that's available for both of those lines is available on the website and we'll have those links in the show notes as well sure. but, um so and we do have, just real quick i'm sorry we do have an online uh website uh online store coming up I'm launching a YouTube channel and an online store, both with the name of Oz Cannabis Couch. So within a month, you'll be able to go directly to our online store and be able to purchase right there. So it'll be much more simple. A um, lot of things happening here with us. You know, we've done a lot of shifting because of what's going on. And so, um, yeah. So I, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I'm curious how you got on Amazon. A lot of people get kicked off of Facebook and Instagram. You know, they can't even post pictures of it. And yet you're actually selling products of, of your hemp line. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been able to do that? And how's that working out? Kind of just briefly tell me about that whole process of selling uh, e-commerce. Frustrating process. Been working on it for years. Um, and you will see that, you know, tr Amazon's tricky because... Um, they're selling tons of CBD products, but none of them say CBD. Mm -hmm. So there's the 
trick. You know what I mean? I had to do label adjustments for mine, you know, even, you know, it says on the back in the ingredients, whole plant hemp extract. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how most people are getting around it. Now, I know people that were on Amazon and they were taken off and you know what I mean? So it's, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to be successful. Um, but who, who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, there are literally hundreds of CBD products on Amazon. It's just not so in your face with it. So it's, it's all a, it's a shell game. It has been for 25 years. You know what yeah. I mean? So until we are legally decrimmed and you know cannabis is removed from the schedule then i'll be selling cannabis basics all over the country and everyone will be buying it but for now when we're still in this gray area where you know cbd is legal in some states and you know it's it's, it's just crazy trying to keep up with it but you know we're so right now the long and short answer is that i have three labels i have a cannabis basics label i have a hemp basics label and then i have a hemp basics label for amazon <laughs> maybe that's saying too do. much but that is yeah. that's where we're at right now mm -hmm. so and it was just recently we've only been on for about a month well it's been trial by fire like you said for for you know 25 years you, you kind of have to keep doing everything without there being a master plan it's like you are the plan people are riding on your coattails um trying to to keep up and so even at the grocery store, there were only a couple of products or competitors. And now, you know, Charlotte's Web is next to you uh, at a lot of grocery stores locally here in the Northwest. And so we are definitely seeing more people into the space. And, and it's, it's a little awkward, to be honest with you, when John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, kind of leaves politics and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'm pro cannabis now. Like he just saw one of those really large checks, you know, and he's like, OK, I'm on board now. But we've also seen from statistics that names don't always work out. So whether you're an actor, actress, uh, athlete, it doesn't really matter. Um, and in fact, Willie's private reserve left Washington State. They're like, forget it. We're out of here. So with the exception maybe of Snoop Dogg in California or Burner because of his genetics, it really hasn't helped them out. So whether it's, you know, a um, you know, football player or... Um, Keanu Reeves CBD line or Gwyneth Paltrow's new infused beverage or Kristen Bell's, um, you know, uh, hemp and beauty aids, probably not going to help them out uh, in terms of sales. So a lot of competitors, a lot of people coming on board, but will it, will it really translate to sales? You, I, I, yeah, I, well, I have so many feels, so many feels about that. Um, so I will point out that I'm the, the, longest commercially active cannabis topical manufacturer in the country at 25 years. I started in 1994. What I like to say is 25 years ago, I had literally a handful of competitors that were in the hemp seed oil space. Okay. Five of us really with that had any kind of uh, momentum. Uh, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, I had 20 competitors in Washington state, you know, all over the country. There were a few in Colorado, a few in California and a few here. And, and I just, for your uh, viewers, I don't do any ingestibles. I only do topicals. So, you know, so whittle it down a little bit. And now because of the CBD craze, I have, you know, 2000 competitors and, you know, you know, celebrities jumping on the bandwagon, I think, and, and, and so that's super frustrating for me because I've been here all along and it's frustrating on many levels. One is because we're only focusing on one cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. Even the hemp plant has more than just CBD. And then it's got all the terpenes and all we're talking about is, so anybody can buy isolate off of the internet and throw it in a bucket of lotion and put it out on the, on the market. And, and unfortunately that is what, ha that is what's happening. Um, so so I just, I always, I always like to give consumers these few points when they're shopping for, and I think one of the reasons why a lot of these products are going away is because it, you can get somebody to buy it one time on somebody's name, but unless they love it, they're not buying it again. So you have to have the repeat business. And so for consumers looking for CBD products in this crazy marketplace, I have three tips. One, 
please make sure that you're looking for whole plant CBD and not isolate. I think it's been proven that whole plant therapeutics is better. If you want to go to pharma and they're doing only isolate, that's one thing. But as far as like, you know, uh, therapeutics are concerned, whole plant is always the best. Two, it's really important what the other ingredients are on that label. So you could have the best whole plant hemp extract and be working with that. But if you've got a lot of other crap in the label, it, it defeats the purpose. You know what I mean? And lastly, uh, what drives me crazy about the CBD industry right now is that people are gouging price-wise these consumers that are looking towards these products to have a better quality of life. When I started using hemp-derived CBD, it was coming from Europe about, mm, it was almost seven years ago now, six, six years ago maybe. Um, I was paying 22 cents a milligram for CBD. And now that is not the case. You know, anybody that's manufacturing uh, topicals or even ingestibles on any kind of legitimate scale, they're not paying more than a penny a milligram for CBD. Mm -hmm. So when I see something that has 100 milligrams and they're charging 125 bucks for it or mm -hmm. whatever, it makes me crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I really feel like it, it's they're ripping consumers off. And so those are my three points of how consumers should shop for, you know, don't get ripped off, look at the other ingredient and look for whole plant um, products as opposed to isolated uh, cannabinoids. Yeah. Anything more than 10 to 15 cents a milligram is not going to be affordable, especially for like an infused beverage that has more expensive packaging. It's just way too expensive. It's you, you nobody's know. paying that. Nobody's paying that anymore. There's so much CBD out there. You know, once the hemp bill passed and everybody started growing CBD under you know, the farm bill, you know, used to be we imported it. Now it's grown here and there's so much of it. So um, I just don't want people to get ripped off, especially people that are looking towards this industry for relief from their aches and pains or whatever, ingestibles, insomnia, whatever it is. I just am concerned that the not so great players are creating a bad image for us all. It's it's Definitely. highly concerning to me. As there, someone there's a lot of snake oil out there. Like you said, uh, an isolate we call hot dog water on this podcast. Full spectrum is definitely the way to go. But you yeah. you mentioned you don't do ingestibles. Is there a reason you haven't come out with tincture? Oh, the, I, I, I decided long, long ago that uh, legally it was going to be smarter for me just to stay in my lane. Like my lane is body care. It is not anything that you put in your mouth because, you know, and actually j just, if we want to talk about Chaba for a second here. And I do want to point out that even though those competitors are on the shelves with me in grocery stores here in Washington state, those are CBD products. My products have marijuana in them as well. So there's a and different- that's, a, that's an interesting point because you said the, yeah. the legality or the legal loopholes or barriers are the reason you didn't want to go into tincture. And yet you went all the way to the federal level and you got a Thank trademark. You. Yeah, oh, a trademark's a total separate thing. Chaba is the law that allows me to sell my low-level marijuana topicals, non-intoxicating topicals in regular grocery stores here in Washington state. It's It's- you know, it's a law that exists only here in Washington state. It is five years old. No one has had any issues with it. Basically what happened was there was no way for me to move forward into the regulated system to be in pot shops here because my products didn't have enough cannabis in them. They don't need it. They're effective at low levels. And so I literally, uh, Carrie Boyder and myself, uh, co-authored legislation. Jeannie Cole Wells and Representative Ryu uh, Prime sponsored it, and we were able to get it passed here in Washington State five years ago now. And so our products, my one ounce container of Triple X, my number one, well, one of my number one selling products, it could have under the law that we got passed, it could have up to 85 milligrams of activated THC. It doesn't because I don't need it. It's effective at, you know, I'm at about 25 on that particular one. But the fact of the matter is we have something here in Washington state that no other marketplace has. And another point that I want to make about it is that I'm in grocery stores, drug stores, massage therapist studios, every place else in Washington state, except for the regulated pot shops. 
And what that does is a beautiful thing as well, because my topicals are being sold mainstream with just a regular sales tax on them, you know, 10% Washington state topicals that are sold in the pot shops are getting that ridiculous. I don't even know where we are now with it. Is it still like 37% or so. whatever it is? Um, there, there's an added tax on those topicals. So consumers can walk into PCC and pick up the triple X, you know, at a much more reasonable price and taxation and with full effectiveness, I would argue. And why is it more effective if for people who don't know about the entourage effect The Chaba, that's what cannabis health and beauty aids, mm -hmm. cannabis health and beauty aids. We coined that phrase with this law. Um, Haba is health and beauty aids is the division in grocery stores where, you know, your lipsticks, your body creams, your, you know, whatever health and beauty aids. Um, I forgot your question, Josh. The question is what, why is it more beneficial? What, what is it with the entourage effect that allows your product to be better than just a straight? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's because it's whole plant and it's not just about the cannabis or the cannabinoids or the terpenoids from the cannabis. It's about the cannabis's relationship to the arnica and the tea tree and the echinacea and all of the other botanicals. I have a list of 40 some botanicals in my line. So it is really about whole plant cannabis and whole plant formulation with other really beautiful botanicals. Um, we don't use isolate at all. Um, we do organic hemp seed oil, cold pressed. We do hemp and cannabis hydrosol. So that's a water distillation process. I still use full um, whole plant uh, infusion, which is just a fat binding to olive oil, which a lot of people don't use. And even though it's not the most um, yielding of the processing, I think there's still something very beautiful that set that helps set my, my line apart from everybody else. And then lastly, we do use um, ethanol extraction as well. And, um, you know, except for the cold pressing of the hemp seed oil, I do all of the processes myself. I've learned how to do all the extraction processes that I need. I mean, back in the day, I was using uh, CO2 extracted hemp, but now I'm extracting my own hemp with ethanol. So I don't have to rely on anybody else. You know, I'm not growing it. So I, I rely on growers but I don't have to rely on other extractors. Um, yeah, from, from scratch, our products are from scratch. And I do think that it, it and also no chemical preservatives, no man-made fragrance oils. So, you know, it's about as clean as a body care line as you can get. And you got that synergistic effect too, from a little bit of THC and CBD, the entourage effect. Uh, so that, it's always a yeah, good thing with that. I would also argue that there's 120 cannabinoids in the marijuana plant. Like we, we're not even talking about any of the other cannabinoids that are there and doing their job. You know, some of them are agonists, some of them are antagonists on the CB2 receptors. And, you know, um, it'll be decades before we really know the full scope of all of the cannabinoids from the marijuana plant. But right now, we can just use them as they are because we know that they're not harmful topically. And they're, you know, that there's uh, so many effects. Like I can't, because the FDA, I can't make any claims, right? So it's very difficult to really talk about the particular uses that these are for. But I can tell you that I have thousands of consumers that swear by the efficacy of these all natural products. I don't want to spend too much time on, on the trademark issue, but did, did that yeah. allow you to be able to use the cannabis leaf in your products? Whereas before it wasn't allowed, can you kind of go into that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, sure. And that's been a good five years now. It was a big year five years ago. There were a lot of things that happened. So we got the first ever USPTO trademark registration for a logo. So the cannabis basics logo, and this is kind of split. I've got two logos in one here. That's the hemp basics, that's the cannabis basics. But basically it was the first time that um, a registration was given to a logo that had the pot leaf and the word cannabis that actually protected a product with cannabis in it. So there were logos that preceded us that were for educational institutions or services but this was the first time that it was actually for a product that had cannabis in it. Now, 
when I did it, 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 it was to cover the hemp. It was I, hemp basics didn't even exist at the time. It was cannabis basics hemp line at the time. So I had two separate lines, but it was under cannabis basics. So it was my cannabis basics hemp line that I was awarded the registration for. We left the whole THC conversation completely out of it. And so that way, and by default though, all of the cannabis basics products are protected because that logo's registration is there. And I, I think that it, it opened the door for more IP to be, to be protected because of our historic trademark. It was really exciting. You know, it was a big deal. It's hard to believe that was half a decade ago. That's a lot of, of hurdles in, in a short period of time, but so many things have happened simultaneously. So many things, and you know, I, I just, I'm tenacious, Joss. I, I just keep, you know, I, I just keep doing it, you know, and I do want to just, just business wise, I really do want to give props to all of the marijuana smoking entrepreneurs like myself that, um, you know, it, I just really want to go against the stereotype that people that smoke pot sit on the couch. I can easily say that if I was not a cannabis consumer, smoking, my company would not be where it is today. You know what I mean? I use cannabis to get stuff done. You know what I mean? It's a motivator for me. And so I'm so, I just want to put that out there because I feel like more and more people need to speak up about how they use it positively in their lives and in their businesses. Like I'm not going to smoke and get on a podcast that's not happening, but I do use it in my daily operations because a lot of what I do is redundant. You know, I'm still small batch, you know, artisan craft producers. So I'm still doing a lot of this by hand and it's, it's really repetitive. There's a lot of labeling, a lot of cap capping, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, it definitely helps me. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. The listener of this podcast know that I'm, I'm not a fan of companies like Tilray where the CEO talks about never using cannabis and therefore really not understanding the industry. So how can you know about trends and future things when you have no idea what's going on with the industry, which is yeah. why Aurora and Canopy have written off billions of dollars Literally, right. each one of them had written off billions because they don't know how to invest it because they don't know what's happening in the industry to proper properly value those acquisitions or mergers that they're getting involved with. So it, it's important to know the industry, to know the culture, to be involved. Otherwise, it's just a commodity, but we're not there yet. Cannabis isn't really normalized as a commodity. So you have been tenacious. Tell me about that tenacity 25 years ago. How did you get started and how the hell have you stayed in business? Oh my gosh. Well, 25 years ago, what it, the, the story is I, uh, you know, I was, a, I was, I was a consumer. I was a pot smoker, but I did not know, you know, it started with industrial hemp for me. I did not have any clue what industrial hemp was until I walked into the Fremont hemp company, mind blown, like, you know, fabric and books. And, uh, but the main thing that really changed my life and turned me into an advocate for hemp was Jack's book, Jack Harris book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. I mean, you know, it changed everything for me. Not only did it uh, open my eyes to all of the uses, but it really made me uh, look at the way our government had represented, had vilified this plant and how uh, we shouldn't be so blindly trusting of the government. Like it really did open my eyes to that. And really changed my life forever. I mean, when I first started, I was making, oh my gosh, pillows and, you know, candelabras, hang hemp twine candelabras. And I had candles and I had, I had about nine different lines of products. And thank goodness, the line that really lives on is the body care line. So it was just hemp seed oil. I didn't even know what a cannabinoid was, if I'm being honest, until about eight years ago. It wasn't until I stepped into the medical marijuana world that I was just like, oh my God, there's something called a cannabinoid. Oh, that's what THC is. Oh my gosh. And there's so many of them and they're, you know, so beneficial. That's when I started looking into the science of marijuana then and adding it to the beautiful attributes of hemp seed oil, because that truly, again, is the foundation of everything that I do. 
Um, and then, you know, it just has, has gone on from there. You know, I, medical marijuana, I, you know, I've had to reinvent my marketplace so many times back in the hemp days, I had to convince everybody that you couldn't get high from <laughs> hemp, you know, from wearing a hemp shirt, you know, it was a joke that I was so sick of, you know, can I get high if I smoke that dress, you know? Um, and then seven, eight years ago, I had to even convince the medical marijuana stores that topicals was even a thing. Even the people that had pot shops back then in the medical days, they were not sold on the fact that a topical could be effective, right? Mm. And so now here I am again in the mainstream world, now trying to convince these mainstream buyers, grocery store owners, especially here in Washington state, that it is safe for them to carry Chaba products because of the law that we passed. So it's been a re-education and a re-education. And as I educate myself further and evolve, I've had to educate my consumers and my buyers, whether they be wholesale or retail. So it's been, it's been a crazy ride, but I'm still here. It's going to be a little bit easier being able to say, well, it's in PCC or it's in this grocery store. It's at, that's got to be a little bit more normalizing and mainstream that you have a, a large grocery store chain carrying sure. stuff rather than saying, hey, just buy this stuff out of my trunk. That's- yeah. Oh, for sure. But I have to tell you back to the, not to, I don't want to beat up the CBD conver- conversation, but I have to tell you um, in the last two years, uh, you know, the pandemic this situation has been a massive challenge. But even the year before this started, my sales, even at PCC, were dropping because it's hard to explain to the consumer when they're looking at all these new CBD products and then my product, Mm -hmm. how my product also has THC in it. and, And that leads to the entourage effect. And you know what I mean? So it's really, really difficult to compete in this um, in this world where people are just being inundated with all of these CBD products, you know, I just, I just figure I just have to keep doing what I do and coming up with, you know, solutions to a a new product problem. And, uh, you know, just keep rolling with the punches. I mean, for me, it's important that my brand be a legacy brand, you know, 25 years from now, 50 years from now, when I'm gone, I want the cannabis basics name to live on. Yeah. So working towards that. So you've got some new products out. You're trying e-commerce. You're been in business 25 years. You've seen the grocery store. Um, what about 2021? So, you know, 2020 is a dumpster fire. We can all kind of agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. What is going to happen with the industry? We have an election coming up this week. And regardless of who wins, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, vote. What do you think is going to happen with the interest industry as a whole? What's your crystal ball prediction say? Well, um, it's hard for me to say the industry in the whole, because in many ways, Josh, I'm so removed from the, the rest of the industry. Like I'm, I'm more closely tied to the hemp industry than I am the marijuana industry that heavily regulated because I don't, I'm not under those regulations. I'm not under those tax stuff. You know what I mean? So it's very, very different for me. I can tell you what the future holds for my company, what 2021 looks like for my company, Um, you know, with launching the new product and, um, you know, getting on Amazon, those were two big goals for this period. But next year, um, well, that we're working on it now, you know, Oz Cannabis Couch. Now, The the exciting thing and the reason why I want to talk about this, so it is an online retail store, right? So you can go there and buy hemp basics, but you can also buy my jewelry line. You can buy mugs, you can buy t-shirts and whatever else I want to carry there. That's why I didn't call it Cannabis Basics. I wanted to have a store name that was, you know, a broader. But um, the exciting project that I have going on is Oz Cannabis Couch, the YouTube channel. And so right now I'm developing a uh, episodes where, and I hope to have them just keep, keep, you know, I have plenty of material as the point. It's a format that has three basic points. So I've always wanted to, I think it's really important that we pay homage to all of the activists and entrepreneurs that were before five years ago, 
let's just say. The entrepreneurs that were there 20 years ago, 15 years ago, the ones that made this happen, the activists that made the laws change. And so they're called my my heroes, my hemp and cannabis heroes. So each for each episode, I'll talk about one of my heroes and then and, you know, there's a list of 100, 100 of them at least. And then I have been archiving um, memorabilia for 25 years. Oh, wow. So I have a collection I don't want to call it a museum because it's not a museum, but it is an archive of um, items, artifacts from the last 25 years, clothing, T-shirts. I have a library of, you know, a couple hundred books, I, uh, posters from 25 years ago, books. I have, you know, one book that's almost 100 years old, the, um, the era key for the pharmacopoeia. You know, I've just been collecting that stuff. So a person, my hero, a thing, and then we'll wrap up the ep every episode with a nugget of knowledge or a nug of knowledge. So really exciting. So that is happening. The first three episodes are written. Um, I'm doing this all myself. So I took a deep dive on editing and all of that stuff. So that's super exciting for me. And all of that will uh, guide traffic to the online website. And of course, boost sales for cannabis basics and hemp basics, right? It is a business. Um, but I feel like I can do some good and really partake some history and some knowledge that, you know, we live this. I've been living it for 25 years. And most of the people that are in my intimate circle they have as well. But there are so many people that are new to cannabis and a new generation that don't know about the pioneers. They don't know about Brownie Mary. They don't know about a neat erotic from the body shop that was at the first, you know, truly mainstream commercial hemp company. So I want to bring those people to light. And so I'm super excited about that project. When is that going to launch? When do we get to see that? Well, I'll definitely send the press release out. I'm I'm optimistic that we've got another probably six weeks. Okay. So yeah. So the it's all about, you know, yeah. We so don't want to go by, into by January 2021, there should be an episode out that people can kind of go and check out. Yes, for sure by January 2021. And the the online store will be open by the end of this month, by the end of November. So that'll be run. And it's hosted on Shopify. So it's built. We're ready. It's just about launching it, making it all pretty and launching it out. And then you can go directly to buy hemp basics there. But for Washingtonians, you'll still have to call me because I can't really online do the THC say, you know what I mean? We're just going to be a little bit more cautious there. So it's still going to be a little bit more personal contact for Washingtonians, but that's okay. What I have learned about business in these particular times, you know, I never considered myself a retailer. I'm a wholesale manufacturer. I'm a product formulator. And so I've really kind of avoided the whole retail thing, but that's not what's happening anymore. We have to have as product manufacturers, we have to have personal relationships with our consumers. You know what I mean? And so that's why the YouTube channel and, you know, I'm gearing up to have a little bit more direct contact with my buyers and, and my consumers. Before we wrap this up, how have things changed? What's uh, some of the biggest post-pandemic issues or changes that you've seen occurring in the in the marketplace? Well, if we're if we're talking, if we're not talking about the CBD craze because to me they they're they're side by side as far as challenges for me. So let's just put it out there. But as far as um, the the pandemic is concerned, um, you know grocery stores are still open. So, you know, I'm still selling product, but I would say it, it's knocked sales down about 50% for me. Wow. Yeah. It's a big deal. And so that's why I'm hustling to make all these new things happen, to get new excitement around the line, new products. Um, but remember a lot of my buyers, a lot of my, uh, not only are they my users, massage therapists are a big deal for me in Washington state. A lot of massage therapists use my products in their practice and then they sell it out of their practice. And so, you know, er, it stopped mm -hmm. with this, no hands-on touching. So that is, has to be the, probably the most profound thing for my company is that all of my hands-on massage therapists were really uh, handicapped or, you know, their hands were tied. Um, it's coming back a little you know, some people are doing massage. It's not back the way we need it to be. Um, but I have to say that I'm really, really grateful that I have 
you know, at least I have 50% of sales from the last year. At least I'm able to survive, keep going, keep, you know, production going. Um, uh, you know, I almost lost my number one um, purveyor of ingredients. Um, you know, they almost got burnt out. And wow. so that could have, you know, there's been some really near misses as far as the, the fires in Oregon and California. Um, my number one Liberty Natural in Oregon, they were evacuated and it could have taken them down. And if that had taken them down, it would have created a whole host of issues for me that we avoided. So I'm feeling very blessed in this moment, even with all of the challenges that, that we have had to deal with. Very blessed. I think that's a great place to wrap this up. Uh, Warner, how can they get a hold of you and uh, Hemp Basics and Cannabis Basics? What are some links and uh, places they can see you well, at, cannabis, social media or otherwise? Yeah, CannabisBasics.com is the uh, website. Um, if you want to order, if you're in Washington State, you want to order 206-851-4367. That's hemp. Uh, you can talk to us directly. Uh, Instagram is Cannabis Basics one facebook's facebook is cannabis basics um yeah that's pretty much the rundown perfect and again all those links will be in the show notes i want to thank my my guest al warner ceo and founder of cannabis basics hemp basics thanks for being on the podcast thanks josh for having me i really appreciate it and um you know keep doing what you're doing stay safe um yeah, I appreciate you. I will. Thank you. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. And check out these other videos that we've got.